It is good to be back in Ohio. President Obama making a stop here in Northeast Ohio. His message was supposed to be about the economy, but a controversial decision is now the big headline, and it all involves a former political leader right here in Ohio. The president appointed former Attorney General Richard Cordray as the nation's chief consumer watchdog. Good evening, I'm Danita Harris. And I'm Lee Jordan. The appointment comes despite GOP opposition in Congress. News Channel 5's John Kosick was at today's event and joins us live from Shaker Heights. And John, the talk about John job seems to be overshadowed tonight by one job, and that's Richard Cordray's new role. Yeah, Lee, uh, President Obama essentially saying to Congress today, look, we tried this by your rules, and now in this election year, we're going to try it by mine, and the man at the center of it all is Ohio's own Richard Cordray. For six months, the nomination of former Ohio Attorney General Richard Cordray to the director of the newly created Consumer Financial Protection Bureau has been held up by the U.S. Senate. The only reason Republicans in the Senate have blocked Richard is because they don't agree with the law that set up a consumer watchdog in the first place. They want to weaken the law. So with Congress in recess, the president today exercised his constitutional power to name top officials without Senate confirmation, a move that angered top Republicans. House Speaker John Boehner calling it an unprecedented power grab. Today, the president essentially saying, tough. When Congress refuses to act, and as a result, hurts our economy and puts our people at risk, then I have an obligation as president to do what I can without them. The White House said yesterday the president's fourth-year game plan would include executive actions that didn't require congressional approval. It's clearly a strong one. He plans on using that same force. He promises to push for the extension beyond the first two months of this year of the middle-class tax cuts. Uh, when Congress returns, I'm going to urge them to extend this tax cut all the way through 2012 with no drama, no delay. Do the right thing. It is a no-brainer. Let's get it done. Now, uh, Ohio Senator Rob Portman calling the Cordray move today a dramatic partisan overreach. And he says the statute creating the new position requires that his powers can only be activated with Senate confirmation, not a recess appointment. So in the minds of the Senate, this new bureau still doesn't exist. Reporting live in Shaker Heights, John Kasich, News Channel 5. All right, John, thanks very much. Just before his speech, the president stopped to meet with local families facing difficult times. The elderly couple almost lost their home to fraud. News Channel 5's Tracy Carlos continues our team coverage. And Tracy, you talk with the couple who got some one-on-one -on -one time with the president today. Yeah, Danita, we did. And I got to tell you, there was excitement up and down one street in Cleveland. It is the talk of Holborn Avenue today. The President of the United States on this modest street on Cleveland's southeast side. We have exclusive video of the President holding babies and meeting neighbors. Here, he's holding nine-month-old Lyric Coates, a thrill for her great-grandmother, Beulah Carter. Great, great uh, to meet the President. That was a lifetime experience. But the president was here to meet 81-year-old William Eason and his 91-year-old wife, India. The couple has lived in this home for 40 years. They almost lost it to fraud. The couple was approached by a broker who offered to help them take out loans and make repairs. The repairs that have originally been promised uh, to be made for a few thousand dollars were never completed. And they almost lost their home. Two local agencies stepped in to help the couple fight to keep their home. Older people took a man word as his bond and a handshake. And I believe Mr. Easton from his heart thought that he was doing the right thing and that they were fair. You know, having the president come to Mr. and Mrs. Easton's home, I mean, you know, and meet with them and, and talk with them and sit down with them. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. We caught up with William just minutes after the president left. It was an honor. You wasn't there. Yeah. made my day. And India was with the president as a guest at Shaker High. Here is exclusive video of her returning home after the big day, a day that she will likely long remember. I would feel kind of happy. To say the least, right? India Easton tells us the president and his Secret Service team did not leave her house empty-handed. She baked them some pies, and she tells us that she got good reviews. Cleveland Hospitality at its best. In the newsroom, Tracy Carlos, News Channel 5. Tracy, thank you.
The president's visit comes on the heels of last night's Iowa caucus. The results have one candidate calling it quits and three others making a big push toward New Hampshire. In the end, Mitt Romney and Rick Santorum came out on top in a historically close race. Emily Schmidt joins us from Washington, D.C. as we look at the aftermath of Iowa and where all the candidates go from here. Emily, it's been a fast and furious 24 hours. Lee, that's right. Everything moved from Iowa looking forward to New Hampshire. But if Iowa set the stage, what a stage it's going to be. The closest caucuses in Iowa history, but the winner determined by just eight votes. Governor Mitt Romney received 30,015 votes. Mitt Romney won. Thank you, Iowa, for the great send-off you're giving to us. But Rick Santorum's almost first-place finish gives him momentum going into New Hampshire and South Carolina. Game on. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ron Paul finished third, but the Iowa caucuses were not so kind to some of the other presidential hopefuls. Newt Gingrich, Rick Perry, Michelle Bachman, and John Huntsman all got less than 30% of the vote combined. And after her disappointing sixth place showing, Michelle Bachman announced today she is suspending her campaign. And so last night, the people of Iowa spoke with a very clear voice. And so I have decided to stand aside. So with that decision, this is the Republican field. And look, thought it could be a little bit different last night because Rick Perry said he was going to reassess his campaign. Instead, today, he said he is going to go forward. As far as John Huntsman, he did come in last in Iowa, but that was no big surprise. He just hadn't invested any time or money there. He is putting his eggs in New Hampshire's basket. We'll see how that strategy pays off in just six days, Lee. Emily, New Hampshire is the next primary, but South Carolina is going to be a real litmus test for the most conservative voters, right? Yeah, it was so interesting because we heard a lot of candidates not saying we're on to New Hampshire, but especially Rick Perry saying the next leg of this race is going to be in South Carolina. He's not forgetting New Hampshire. There's a reason there. Uh, Mitt Romney certainly polling very strong in New Hampshire. He picked up some endorsements today, like from Senator John McCain. So candidates think the next place to really take him on is someplace like South Carolina, where they're going to be open to more conservative evangelical Christians. Folks like Rick Santorum, Rick Perry, hoping that is the place that keeps things interesting and puts perhaps another Nick in Mitt Romney's armor. All right, and of course, Florida still to come, too. Emily Schmidt in Washington, thanks later. very much. When it comes to Democracy 2012 coverage, stick with News Channel 5 and Newsnet5.com for every breaking development in the race for the White House. Right now, people are online sharing their thoughts on the president's remarks here in Ohio today. Join the conversation by commenting on Newsnet5.com. Did you see the president's limo driving into town today? We got an eyeful of the special Cadillac they call the Beast. And as you might expect, it's bulletproof and heavily armored. The doors are surprisingly thick and made of titanium, steel, and aluminum. The tires are run flats, reinforced with Kevlar, and the Beast gets about eight miles to the gallon.